Hello guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Hit the bell icon button so that you don't miss out any tutorial. Okay, in this video, I'm going to introduce my preferred code editor, a couple of settings and extensions that aid me in WordPress development. By following the instructions in this video, you'll be able to set up your own code editor for better development practices. So although I have used many code editors over the years like NetBeans and Atom, Brackets, Noteplus, Notepad++, these days I really enjoy Visual Studio Code. It's a free editor that's lightweight and fast, includes many features of IDEs, that's integrated development environments, including version control and debugging support, code completion capabilities, error checking and code linting, as well as multi-language support and many extensions and plugins. It's also a really well-supported project. There's loads of online documentation, hints and tips, regular updates. It's really, really great. So why don't we head over to code.visualstudio.com to download and install the copy of Visual Studio Code. If you just go ahead and click the big download button right there, you'll be able to run the installation project run the installation process on your machine. Uh, the installation is pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and download it and install it. If you need it for other platforms or other versions, you can click some of these other links. Uh, once you download and install the program, uh, let's take a quick look around. So I've already installed Visual Studio Code, and this is what the editor looks like. So in here, the first screen you may see is the welcome screen. And down here at the bottom, you have a checkbox that would allow you to not show the welcome screen on startup if you want. Uh, you could deselect that. But there's a couple of interesting things to take a look at here. First is the Learn page down here, the Learn menu. So if you're new to Visual Studio Code, uh, you can click a couple of these links and get familiar with Visual Studio Code. You can find how to run certain commands or search things in Visual Studio Code. You can take a look at the uh, interface. On the left sidebar, you can see we have File Explorer searching. Uh, we have source code management. We have a debugger, and we have some extensions. Uh, down at the bottom, we have some warnings and errors. There's notifications over here. We have the find and run commands search box up here. And my personal favorite touch is this integrated terminal. That means that you will be able to have your command line tools and your code editor in the same place at the same time. And that is my favorite feature. That's why I use Visual Studio Code compared to other editors. If we push Shift tilde, if we push Command tilde, we can open the terminal window at the bottom and we can type some terminal commands, some command line commands, and get familiar with that. Control tilde turns that back off. Uh, another interesting feature is here, the customize. We'll, we're able to install different language support. Uh, we're able to set some of our settings, key bindings. We're able to change the theme as we wish. You can also take a look over here and help. There's a printable keyboard cheat sheet, introductory videos, tips and tricks. All of these things will help you get familiar with Visual Studio Code. If we take a look at this printable keyboard cheat sheet, you can see that there's loads of keyboard shortcuts that you're able to install or you're able to access. Uh, and you can find different versions of those at this link down here. If you need one for Windows or Linux, you can also take, take a look at that. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of our extensions. So if we click over here in the extensions menu, we can see that I... I have already enabled a few extensions here, and these are some of the ones that I'm going to ask you to enable also so that we can get better with our development. Uh, there's a couple of recommended extensions down here. Another interesting thing that you would be able to check out is some of the popular extensions, and this is one of the good ways to find out what kinds of things are really useful these days. So if you click this uh, little three dots up in the right corner of this menu, you can see installed extensions, outdated extensions, jum, 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 etc. Uh, all the way down to popular extensions. You can click popular extensions. And then you can see some of the most popular extensions that are available for us to download and install. And so a couple of things you should notice is first, 
this number right here shows how many people have downloaded it. 13.8 million people have support for the Python language now. You can see how many stars it has. 4.5 stars is pretty highly rated. And you can also see who developed it. The developer in this case is Microsoft, who also made this code editor. Microsoft also has a C and C++ uh, extension here. Uh, if, if you want, we can take a look at what kinds of extensions are available for WordPress. So go ahead and type in this search box, WordPress, push return, and let's just see what's available. Uh, it looks like there's a bunch of snippets for WordPress, auto-completion. Uh, there's some Gutenberg snippets, things like that. So, you know, just if you're interested, you can go ahead and see how many downloads it has, how many stars it has, who's the developer. This one looks pretty good. It has a lot of stars. It has a lot of installs. And WPDevTools.io seems pretty reputable. So that might be one that you would look into. You can click that. It'll load uh, the page that explains about this extension. And if you think it looks good, just go ahead and click Install. Some of them would require uh, a reload, but you can reload the Visual Studio code from this page. It'll have a reload button right there. Anyway, let's take a look at some of the extensions that I would like you to install for this class. So a couple of things that I have installed is Git Lens, which I'm using Git for my development. And so Git Lens lets me really easily see some of the Git changes and updates and like what date it was updated and, you know, things like that. So I personally really like Git Lens. Uh, we can add some HTML and CSS support. This adds CSS support for HTML documents. There's another one here called HTML snippets, which allows us to type very simple lines, very simple commands like div. And if you push tab then or enter, then it will change it into code for you. So you could type doc, enter, and it changes it into doc type HTML. Uh, a couple of other things we want is IntelliSense for CSS class names in HTML. IntelliSense will pop up this nice pop-up menu as we start typing our CSS class names. Uh, I also have a PHP debugger. If we need to do some debugging, this is a good one. We also have a PHP doc blocker. This will help us to write better doc blocks or better comments, uh, including some at param, at return, at throws uh, in our code. Uh, we also have PHP IntelliSense. Let's go ahead and install that so that as we're typing, uh, it'll pop up some suggestions for different commands and things that we can use in PHP. I also want to install this PHP CS. PHP CS is a code sniffer that will allow us to use a code sniffer and the WordPress coding standards to better develop WordPress themes. I also have one here called Prettier, which helps us to format uh, our code for either JavaScript or for CSS, HTML. It allows us to format, like we can format on save, we can format on paste, you know, and it just helps us to keep good code formatting. And the last one is a style lint. Uh, we can use this to help us check our code, uh, our style code like CSS or SCSS or less, less uh, when we code. Uh, okay, so the next thing I want to take a look at is that many of these customizations can be edited. Many of these extensions can be edited in settings. So you can see the settings menu by either clicking up here, uh, I believe in code. In, in Mac, it's preferences settings. In Windows, it might be in file menu or something. But another way that you can find this is you just click command comma, and then it'll pop up your settings. Uh, so from here, you'll be able to customize the look and feel and functionality of your VS Code experience. Uh, for tips and tricks, there are many good resources online you can find. But one thing to note is that every setting is controlled by a .json, a .json file. You can check up here with this three dots in the right upper right-hand corner. You can see what kind of modified settings you have. So if we click that, I can see that I've modified my font family, I've modified my font ligatures, you know, font size, etc, etc. But right here, that's the important point. Edit in settings.json. So if you find this link, edit in settings.json, you can click that and then you can see all of the customizations that we have for this editor right now. 
You can see up here at the top that I have new font families like Fira Code. The reason I like that one is because of the way it handles uh, conditionals like less than and equal to, you know, things like that. Um, I've edited my tab size to be two spaces instead of four spaces. I included a theme, icon theme customization, so that all of my files, when I, when I open files, uh, each one will have a little icon and some color so that I know what kind of file that is, just with a quick glance. Uh, I've also added that my files should save automatically on window change. I've got a couple of customizations for the theme itself. I'm using the pale night italic theme and I've customized a couple of the colors here. So, you know, if you, if you want to copy what I've got going on here, then these are the settings that you can modify for that. Uh, a little bit farther down, a couple of things that I want you to notice is the editor customizations. These are important in my opinion. I really like, especially this one, the editor dot render white space. And I want it to show all the white space. So this way I am able to see which spaces are actual spaces and which are tabs. Usually it will show me an arrow for a tab, but that time it didn't show me an arrow. Uh, and another thing that you might take a look at is this PHP code sniffer. We're going to look at the PHP code sniffer in the next video, how to set that up and how to get that ready using the WordPress coding standards so that we are able to make better themes according to the WordPress coding standards. So I hope that this was a good primer on VS Code. If you're not familiar with it yet, then, you know, in the next couple of videos as we build our themes, I hope that you, it'll help you become more familiar with it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, do give us a thumbs up and share it. Also check out amazing discounts and offers on our premium courses in the description below.